Good morning. So we are here for the first lecture of microwave engineering. So first we will consider the introduction part. Now before moving to the introduction, let's brush up some ideas which, which are kind of a prerequisite for the microwave engineering course. So first thing is the wave because we are studying microwave. So we have to know all the basics of the wave. So what is a wave? So wave is a kind of a kind of an oscillation where you have crust and rock, right? So this is a wave. So now if you see the distance between one peak from here, one crust to the other crust or one trough to the other trough. This is the wavelength, right? So, or you can see where it will complete its full cycle. That will become the wavelength. So, if, if, if I can start from here, then this will complete the full cycle somewhere here. So, this is the wavelength, right? So, this is a wavelength. And now, what is the frequency? So, this is one complete cycle. So, number of complete cycles passing through a particular point like this in one second. That is your frequency. So, here you can see this is the time axis. So, only one cycle is passing through any particular point you can take like here, here, here. Wherever you take a point, fix that point and then see in one second how many full cycles are passing through that point in one second. Here only one cycle is passing. In one second, the frequency will be 1 hertz. Here, two cycles are passing in one second. So, the frequency will be 2 hertz. Hertz is nothing but hertz is a scientist name given as a unit to the frequency because he was a great scientist and who has worked in this wave and frequency regard. So, so give him regard given. So, hertz is nothing but hertz means per second, right? So, two cycles per second. So, two hertz is the frequency. One cycle per second. So, one is the, one hertz is the frequency similarly. Now, high frequency and low frequency. So, according to the wavelength, you know that wavelength and uh, here it is written, wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional to each other. When one will increase, the other will decrease. When this one will increase, this one will decrease. So similarly, you can see here, this is the wavelength is more here. If you see the wavelength is distance between two crest or two truck is more than this one. So the frequency of the above wave will be less because the wavelength is more, frequency will be less. You see, this is 5 hertz, this is 15 hertz. So, if frequency increases, wavelength decreases, right? So, here you can see more wavelength, low frequency, less wavelength or smaller wavelength, high frequency. Now, next thing is this uh, wave, waves are normally done in the form of sine and cos. So, if you see this is sine theta and this is cos theta. So, if you see the angles, this is 0, this is pi by 2, this is pi, this is 3 pi by 2 and this is 2 pi. So, in this axis, it's always the angle and in this axis, the y axis, it's always the amplitude. Now, this theta can also be expressed in terms of time. How it can be expressed in terms of time? Theta is always equal to omega into t. Omega is angular frequency here, right? Omega is the angular frequency and T is the time. So, whether you consider this x-axis as theta or whether you consider this x-axis as omega T, doesn't matter, okay? So, you can also write sin theta or you can also write sin omega T. If you are considering the uh, ampli if you are considering the waveform in the, re in the respect of time, right? So, if you are considering sine in terms of time, don't write sine theta, write sine t. Because all the current, voltage and all these waveforms, we represent them in terms of time. 
now why why we have taken omega t in respect to theta that will be cleared from here so omega is angular velocity right angular velocity so what is angular velocity angular velocity is this term comes from circular motion so if we consider this is a circle right this is a arc ab is a arc and this is a small angle theta so this theta will be equal to arc upon radius right so theta will be equal to arc upon radius remember this theta is arc by radius so here you can see theta is arc upon radius now if you consider this arc is not till here this b point comes all the way to a right this comes all the way to here now this angle will become 2 pi this angle will become 2 pi or you can also say how it becomes 2 pi this the perimeter is 2 pi r arc will become 2 pi r divided by r this becomes 2 pi right now what is this angular velocity angular velocity is the rate change of the angle means delta theta by delta t so omega is nothing but this delta theta divided by delta t or you can also say arc length upon radius divided by t this is the angular velocity omega right so omega is this much so from here you can see theta will be omega into t theta will be omega into t right so if we look at one wave form one means if you have completed the whole circle the angle subtended will be 2 pi as we have discussed here divided by time period t so omega will become 2 pi by t now t is equal to 1 by f or f is equal to 1 by t that's why omega will become 2 pi f right so this circular motion or circular representation of sine wave or cos wave is similar to this wave form representation so here you can see your sine wave or cos will start from here this is 0 degree from here if it is reaches 30 degree 30 means you will move like this omega t right if it reaches here 90 90 means you will draw a line from here it will reach here right so then you will reach 180 so again it will come here if it 270 it will come here right so you can take in it in terms of degree as well as you can take it in terms of radian but if you see here this theta will come in terms of radian you can convert radian into degree by doing 2 pi this is equal to 360 degree and then you can convert this into radian into degree right so this is the thing and now we talk about the spectrum so here you can see just here you can see the spectrum electromagnetic spectrum so you see microwave is after the radio wave and very near to the visible light region okay so this is the wavelength wavelength is decreasing as we are increasing the frequency so here the frequency is increasing and the wavelength is decreasing so frequency is given in hertz so nearly microwave region starts nearly uh, around 1 gigahertz if you see it's around 10 is the power 9 or 1 gigahertz it will start and it goes till 1000 gigahertz so microwave region is very near to visible light so microwaves will behave very much like the light signal light is also an electromagnetic signal now electromagnetic signal you see here right so if the wave propagating in this direction electric field is perpendicular to the propagation as well as magnetic field is the perpendicular to the propagation so this is a tem wave as i discussed earlier also in the lectures tem wave right direction of propagation electric field and magnetic field all are perpendicular mutually perpendicular to each other right generally we take microwave region from 0.3 gigahertz or 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz we don't go to the range of 1000 gigahertz because we don't use uh, much application about 300 gigahertz and this microwave region is again uh, subdivided in all these bands so you 